Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Thanks for joining in. Today I'm going to tie for you my interpretation of a golden stonefly nymph. The golden stoneflies inhabit all of our freestone rivers. Like all stoneflies, they like water that's highly oxygenated, so you're going to find them in the fastest riffled water. Like other stoneflies, however, they do crawl out on the shore to emerge. So I like a, a heavy nymph like this that I can throw out into the heavier current, let it swing around against the bank, let it sit for a few seconds before I pick it up and throw it out again. Now the gold stone flies, like the salmon flies, have a three year life cycle, which means you have nymphs of three different sizes that are available to the trout all year long. This is really a meat and potatoes fly for our trout fisheries here. I'm using two different colors of wire. The golden stones are very, very brightly colored, different shades of brown and yellows. And unlike the other stone flies, the golden stones are actually carnivorous. They can wipe out an insect population in a section of river if they become too heavily infested. So what I'm going to be using here is a Fire hole model 1811 or 811 size 8. This is a 3x long, 2x wide gap hook. For the bead, I'm using a Cyclops 3 16 inch copper. You can use a tungsten bead if you like, but as you're going to see, I'm going to be adding quite a few wraps of lead wire to give this fly some weight between the lead wire and the abdomen wire. This makes for a dense fly, one that sinks very quickly. All right, for wire, I'm using 0 .020 lead wire. And I'm going to put 14 wraps on this. I like to start over the hook point so that I'm not uh, constantly catching it on the hook point. Keep your wraps nice and tight, makes it easier to consolidate them. And simply push them together, get those tag ends wrapped and smooth. To make sure that the lead is centered in the middle of the bead, I like to bring the bead out to the lead and then push everything forward nice and tight. Now for the thread, I'm using UTC 140 denier black. Going to build a bit of a thread dam here behind the lead to ensure that it doesn't move and also to help with my tapered abdomen. I really like these fire hole hooks. They're all barbless, they're all wide gap, and they're all very, very sharp. Now for the tail, I'm using rusty brown turkey biots. Don't cut these biots, pull them off of the quill. You'll get the entire length that way. Now the disadvantage of using turkey bias is that unlike goose and duck, they're much thinner and they don't flare as well when you tie them in. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of a thread bump here at the base of the tail. Keep my thread right at the beginning of it. I'm gonna tie these both in at the same time. I'm going to face these biots back to back so that the natural curve is outwards, even them up. And about three quarters of a hook shank in length. Hold the biots on top of the hook shank, sp spread them over it, tip them slightly to your side. Take one soft wrap over them, pull it down hard. And I'm going to wrap these back a little bit against that thread bump to help flare it. And then a nice smooth base running forward. 
put these buyouts off just before I get to the lead wraps so I could tie it down nice and smooth. Now the reason I'm using UTC thread is because it's a naturally flat thread. And anytime you're wrapping an overbody, whether it's Chanel or particularly with wire, you want your underbody to be very, very smooth. If not, every little lump and bump with your overbody is going to show through. So I'm using the flattening properties of this thread. You can occasionally flatten it by spinning it counterclockwise as you're looking down. I want a nice, even tapered from the back of my lead wraps all the way to the butt of the tail. Take your time here and do it well. Okay, and I'm bringing my thread just a little bit into the lead wraps. Now for wire, I'm using large, hot yellow and medium amber. It takes about five and a half inches of each of these two wire types to complete this fly. So to avoid wastage, I like to use a ruler and measure it out. Do not use your good scissors to cut this wire. It's the fastest way to ruin them. Use a good wire cutter or an old pair of scissors. All right, this is very much like tying a copper john. If you're tying a lot of these, I like to go ahead and cut all of my wire. Not only helps in the production rate, but you don't get this kinky part that was trapped against the spool. If you cut all your wire off, they'll end up with nice smooth tips. All you need to do is even these up side by side. It really makes no difference which color is on top or on the bottom. Just know that whatever wire is on top is going to lead your wraps as you go forward. I'm going to bring this all the way up to here, trap these on my side of the hook, Keep them on my side and wrap a nice, smooth, tight body all the way down to the butts of the tail. Really firm wrap at the back. Go ahead and reflatten my thread. And bring it back forward. Again, keeping a nice, smooth underbody. All right, lift these up vertical, keep them side to side, keep some pressure on these as you wrap. You want this tight. Typically your first wrap or two, they will separate. Use your scissors to push those two together so that you don't have any gaps. I really like the coloration of this com combination of wire, very much like a golden stone nymph. We're going to wrap this tightly all the way up to the back of the bead. All right, I like to break these wires off one at a time. Makes no difference which one. Several tight thread wraps. Make sure you hold the, the thread 180 degrees away from where the wire is anchored. Your thread is the anchor. If it's not tight, the wire will want to unwind itself. Okay. Fill in that gap just a little bit and make sure I have those tag ends down. Now I'm gonna take my thread Let's see, we'll use the thin skin first. I'm using brown thin skin. This is actually, I cut it at about four millimeters in width, so it just covers the top of the body. I don't want it down over the sides. 
When you're using thin skin, do not strip the cardboard off of the whole strip or this stuff will wad up on you. So I just take the cardboard off enough for what I'm going to be using and it helps with the integrity of this, okay? Like so. Tie this down right on top of the hook shank. First wrap is a soft gathering wrap. Use that to kind of collapse this around the hook. We want to wrap over this, over our, our wire underbody to about one third of the way. And I'm going to come back forward. I'm using some sexy, large sexy floss legs. I don't think the color really makes any difference. It's the movement, although I do like the hot yellow or the brown, something like that. And you tie one on each side. Center it in your thorax area. Make sure it's on the side. Two wraps is all it takes to hold it down. We'll trim these up later. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to move my thread back to put in the peacock thorax. The one thing I found very aggravating when I was doing this was the legs were always in the way. I tried using a piece of copper wire, I tried using a piece of tubing, I tried all kinds of things. I finally just decided why not just spool up another spool of thread, any kind of thread, because this is going to be temporary. Because I don't have spotted. A couple of wraps right behind the bead just to hold it. Bring my legs forward. And a couple of wraps just to hold them out of the way temporarily. Snug this up so it's out of the way. All right, I'm going to be using peacock for the thorax. If you look at peacock hurl, the hurl actually grows from the back of the quill forward. It's kind of a Y shaped. So the, the way you tie in the peacock will determine how nice and full your, your thorax actually is. This is bronze peacock. This is eyed peacock that's been out in the sun and had a chance for the UV rays to turn it this nice bronze lavender color. So what I'm going to do is grab about five of these. It may take more than that. I'm going to keep these oriented. That way I can see how the hurl grows. I'm going to tie these in so that the actual quill part is forward. So with each wrap of hurl, that will cover the quill and we'll get a nice full thorax. I'm going to tie it down here, tie it down right at the base of the legs, and then come forward behind the bead. So when you wrap these, do not twist them. Go ahead and take this off. This is supposed to be temporary, folks, not supposed to be attached. All right. When you wrap these, do not twist them. You want this peacock curl, which I just lost to stay nice and full. One more time for good measure. Now you'll see why the rubber legs are such a pain. Tie it down all the way to the back of the bead. Okay. So we're basically just going to wrap these, one full wrap behind my rear legs. When you come between it, You 
can see hopefully how proudly that hurl stands up. Makes for a really nice full collar. And it's just a matter of how you tie the peacock in and not twist it as you're wrapping it. All right, my thread is right behind the bead. I'm going to bring this thin skin forward like so. A couple of nice tight wraps behind the bead. You can see how it kind of sucks this down a little bit. And I'm going to bring it back and make a couple of wraps here right at the front of it. Kind of keep it pinned back a little bit. And we'll then finish. All right, I'm going to trim this thin skin a little longer than the wing case because I'm going to notch it here. Go ahead and trim these legs all at the same time. And then just use your scissors. I doubt the fish care about this, but I'm just going to put a little bit of a V notch. in that thin skin like that. Not a complicated fly to tie. It's a very dense fly. It's going to sink quickly. Like I say, I like to cast it out into the current, allow it to swing to the shoreline. The fish will often follow these nymphs as they migrate to the shoreline. Make sure you let that fly sit there for a few seconds before you pick it up. You don't know if a trout has followed that all the way to the shoreline before they grab it. They're available here at the shop for you to purchase if you'd like. As always, thanks for joining in. If you have any questions, comments, please let us know. See you next time.